By now, most people are well aware of the relationship between RAM speed and performance on the Ryzen platform. But things have changed and evolved quite a bit over the last few years, and we now have this new third generation of Ryzen that has been shown to be a lot less RAM dependent compared to the older previous generations of these CPUs. So with that said, the whole point of this video is gonna be for hopefully system builders that are considering Ryzen third generation. You can watch this video, that'll hopefully be short and have as little BS as possible and figure out um, hopefully which speed of RAM you should be targeting for your new system. So with that said, let's get started. So to put this to the test on a new modern Ryzen third generation system, I went ahead and ran a bunch of tests and benchmarks with a few of the different RAM speeds that are kind of the popular ones out there today to see what kind of overall effect they would have on the system performance. And for all of the tests, the infinity fabric to DRAM ratio was always maintained at one to one. The system specs are the Ryzen 9 3950X 16 core 32 thread CPU without any tweaks or overclocks or anything like that. It's just running stock settings. It's in an Asus R ROG Strix X570E gaming motherboard. There's a GTX 1080 Ti powering the graphics and it's running Windows 10 Professional Edition on an NVMe SSD. I used RAM from two different brands in these tests, one being G-Skill Neo and the other being Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. What I found with the synthetic benchmarks was that there's definitely some performance to be gained with faster RAM in CPU-Z and in the 3 d Mark Times by CPU test, but the amount gained going from 3200 to 3600 is not as great as going from 2666 to 3200, suggesting that there may be some point of diminishing returns beyond 3200 megahertz. Both instances of Cinebench, that being the older R15 and the newer R20, didn't seem to be affected by the change in speed, with scores coming back very similarly in every single test. Over on the productivity side of things, there's some obvious benefits when using faster RAM. The difference between 2666 and 3600 being an approximate 10% reduction in render time in Blender, while a reduction of about 5% in render time was observed between the slowest and fastest RAM when exporting 4K video in DaVinci Resolve. Now, when it comes to 1080p gaming, the results vary quite a bit from game to game, with some titles like Overwatch observing virtually no change regardless of how fast the RAM was. Generally though, the slowest RAM tested, which in this case was 2666 megahertz at C14, reported the lowest frame rates and seemed to impact the 1 in 0.1% lows the most, which is an important piece of information to consider as these numbers offer some insight into the overall smoothness of the gameplay, more so than just considering average frame rates on their own. So these gaming tests seem to suggest that 3200 megahertz is a sweet spot, offering really good overall performance, but without the cost premium associated with moving up to 3600. Now with the price of RAM fluctuating all the time, you might be able to score yourself a really good deal on a 3600 megahertz kit. And if that's the case, I say go for it. You'll basically be running at the upper limit of the one-to-one -one infinity fabric to DRAM ratio, which is a really good place to be performance wise. Still though, I think the point remains that a good 3200 megahertz kit is going to allow you to achieve an awesome balance of performance and cost, making it an easy, no-brainer type of a choice for most Ryzen third gen system builders. Also worth mentioning, I think, is that if you're a bit of a system tweaker and you don't mind diving into settings and messing around with things manually, you can probably extract even more performance out of any one of these RAM speeds that we tested today by tightening timings. Lower latency should, in theory, translate to greater performance. And just a few quick words of advice for all you system builders out there, just make sure you're checking compatibility when selecting critical system components like memory. Make sure it's gonna work with your motherboard and other system hardware so that you don't run into any issues when you're ready to jump into the build process. And for the sake of not making this video excessively long and boring, I think we'll cut it off right there. There should be enough information available here for you to make an informed decision about what RAM speed would be appropriate for your next Ryzen third gen system build. And make sure you get subscribed because there's a whole lot more content on the way. Cheers. See ya.